The financial stability of a company can be tested in many ways. One of the quickest ways to see just how well a company is performing is to use financial ratios. In this lesson, you will learn what profitability ratios are, how to calculate them, and how to interpret them. There are five major categories of ratio analysis, namely liquidity, net management, asset management, profitability, and market value ratios. Profitability ratio measures the firm's ability to generate a profit and an adequate return on assets and equity. Some common ratios include return on sales, return on assets, and return on equity. Return on sales or profit margin measures the percentage of income derived from dollar sales. Net profit margin is the percentage of revenue remaining after all operating expenses, interest, taxes, and preferred stock dividends have been deducted from a company's total revenue. Shareholders often look at the net profit margin closely because it shows them how good a company is at converting revenue into profits available to shareholders. For example, Company A has a net income of 30000 and a net sales of $100,000. To get the profit margin, we divide the net income $30,000 over net sales $100,000. And we will have 30, which we we'll have to express in percentage, and we get 30%. This means that for every dollar, the company gets to keep 30 cents as profit. Generally, the higher the ROS, the better. And it is normal that any changes in net profit margin will be endlessly scrutinized. In general, when a company's net profit margin is declining over time, a myriad of problems could be to blame, ranging from decreasing sales to poor customer experience to inadequate expense management. Next, return on asset or ROA is an indicator of how profitable a company is relative to its total assets. ROA gives an idea as to how efficient management is at using its assets to generate earnings. The ROA figure gives investors an idea how effectively the company is converting the money it has to invest into net income. By dividing the net income over the total assets, we will get the ROA, which has to be displayed as a percentage. For example, Company A has a net income of 100,000, total assets of 500,000. By dividing these two, we get an ROA of 20%. This means that the company was able to convert 20% of its investment into profit. The higher the ROA number, the better, because the company is earning more money on lesser investments. Lastly, return on equity or ROE is the amount of net income returned as a percentage of shareholders' equity. Return on equity measures the corporation's profitability by revealing how much profit a company generates with the money shareholders have invested. The formula for this is net income over shareholders' equity. For example, Company A has net income of 10000 shareholders equity of 20,000. By dividing 10,000 by 20,000, we get an ROE of 50%. This means that company A generated $0.50 of profit for every $1 of shareholders equity. ROE is more than a measure of profit. It's a measure of efficiency. A rising ROE suggests that the company is increasing its ability to generate profit without needing much capital. It also indicates how well a company's management is deploying the shareholder's capital. In other words, the higher the ROE, the better. However, falling ROE is usually a problem. It is important to note that if the value of the shareholder's equity goes down, ROE goes up. Thus, write-downs and share buybacks can artificially boost ROE. Likewise, a high level of debt could artificially boost ROE. After all, the more debt a company has, the less shareholders' equity it has, and the higher its ROE is. Again, profitability ratio measures the firm's ability to generate a profit and an adequate return on assets and equity. The ratios are return on sales, return on assets, and return on equity.